So now we know how to approximate the instantaneous rate of change using a difference quotient, but we also have a little bit of background on limits. And we should know by now that limits are a sort of a way of getting around dividing by zero and other things like that. Um, so we know the difference quotient looks like this, right? And h at the bottom isn't allowed to be zero, right? So what we were doing in the last lesson, or the, the, the previous part of the lesson, is we were just plugging in really small values very close to zero. But we know that this is basically the same thing as a limit, right? As h approaches zero or gets very close to zero. So instead of using, you know, h as 0 0.0001 or whatever, um, we can actually do this as a limit. We can evaluate it as a limit as h approaches zero. So the process can be very similar um, to, the, to the previous questions. Um, it's just going to be using limit notation. So let's see what this looks like. Example 8. So let's use a difference quotient again. So basically what we're looking for is the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1, right? So IRC is going to equal the limit as x approaches, oh, no, my bad, as h approaches 0 of this f at x plus h minus f at x over h. So again, we've got to plug in our values. This limit thing has to stay here. We haven't used the limit part yet. h goes to 0 of f at x plus h. So looking at our function here, we have 8 over 3 plus x plus h, right? Minus 8 over 3 plus x, all over h. OK, so we can basically do a little bit of algebra here because we can't yet plug in the value of h here because h is still in the denominator, right? So instead, let's try to simplify this thing a little bit more. Uh, in order to do that, we need to evaluate this top part, and we can do that, or simplify the top part, and we can do that by finding a common denominator, right? So the common denominator is going to be this and this, right? So I'm just going to write that out, 3 plus x plus h. There's no common factors between the two of those things. So that's going to be the denominator. And then for the numerators, the first part, we have to multiply by the 3 plus x, there's a minus sign in between, and the second part we have to uh, multiply by that 3 plus x plus h, right? So it's like, if you remember your pattern, you sort of multiply this by this and this by this um, in order to make that denominator the same. And then this whole thing is divided by h. But instead of putting the divided by h there, I'm going to write it a little bit differently. I'm going to do times 1 over h at the end. That's just so I don't have to put this big over h like that because that gets sort of annoying to do um, and this way is a little bit cleaner so that's just another way to, to show that right because dividing by h is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over h so there we go now let's simplify the limit as h goes to 0 and we just basically got to simplify the top here so 24 plus 8x minus 24 minus 8x minus 8h and I'm not actually going to expand the bottom let's just leave it the way it is 3 plus x plus h 3 plus x the reason for that is because the thing that's going to cancel out with the h is going to be in the numerator right um, so let's just leave that like that and continuing along here um, oh first of all we see that these cancel out right and these cancel out. So essentially in the numerator, all we're left with is negative 8h. Oops, I should do this. So this is equal to the limit, still, as h goes to 0, of negative 8h all over 3 plus x plus h times 3 plus x. And then this is all times 1 over h. So this h and this h are going to cancel out, right? And this should really always happen when we apply this thing. If it doesn't, go back and check your work. So now we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 
negative 8 over 3 plus x plus h, 3 plus x. So now, are we allowed to plug in h as 0? We are, right? Because it's not going to make that denominator equal to, um, it's not going to make the denominator equal to 0 and make the whole thing undefined, right? So let's plug in that limit as h approaches 0. So h basically can equal 0 according to the limit. So we basically have 3 plus x, that h goes away, and then 3 plus x. And lastly, we are asked to plug in at x equals 1, right? So at x equals 1, what does this thing going to come out to? Um, so now we can plug in our x, so that's basically going to be negative 8 over 4 times 4, so 60, which simplifies to negative 1 half. There we go. It agrees with our answer up there. So basically, this is just a way of tricking the math and plugging in h as 0. Even though we didn't really, can't really make h equal to 0, according to a limit, we're so close to 0 that we might as well call it 0. So there we go. This is sort of just a loophole, so you don't have to plug in 0 0.001, which would be incorrect mathematically. Okay, so do the same thing. Try example 9. Um, pause it here. Try it. If you get stuck, you can come back uh, to the video, and I will go through, um, or I'll show show the solution to it. Just a bit of a heads up, if you got stuck on this one, we end up with this, right, when we plug it into our difference quotient, um, including the limit, we get this thing. How can we free some of that stuff from under those roots? Because we know we need to cancel it with an H somehow. And the key is, remember the magic word, conjugate. You gotta multiply by the conjugate, basically. Whenever you have things trapped under a square root that you wanna get rid of. So the conjugate of this thing would be root x plus h plus 5. Instead of a minus sign in between them, it's going to be a plus sign in between them, right? Plus root x plus 5 all over that same thing. x plus h plus 5 plus x plus 5. Okay, so pause it here again um, and see if you can um, clear that up with a little bit of algebra. So once you've simplified, you should come down to this. Everything cancels out, two h's cancel out, and you're left with this. And now we are allowed to plug in that h is 0 because it won't make it undefined. So we end up with just 1 over root x plus 5 plus root x plus 5. Okay, and if we want to evaluate this at, what does it say in the question, at 4? We can just plug in a 4 there, and we should get root 9 plus root 9, which is just 1 over 3 plus 3, which equals 1 over 6. There we go. There's our answer. Hopefully, yep, that's right. That's the correct answer on the page. Okay? So what limits allow us to do? They allow us to accurately and exactly find the rate of change of these equations. Right? No more plugging in a small value close to, to 0. Um, we can now solve them exactly.